Welcome once again, friends, on this uh, Sunday, January 31st. Uh, we're so glad to be with you. We want you to know that we've been praying for each and every one of you, literally, every single day. Mm -hmm. And we trust, of course, you've been doing that for us. We're absolutely sure that you have been. The prayer chain has gone back out, uh, which makes us all happy. Things have been fixed. We thank Michelle for that. And, you know, it makes the people that are listed on the prayer chain feel so good to know that that's in your hands now and that you have that in your hands as you pray over it each and every day, which, of course, is the entire point. And we're so thankful for that. Remember, God works. He works. It may not be on our time schedule, but God works always works. He answers prayers. Sometimes it's exactly the way we pray, sometimes not. But he always changes hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing. So thank you for praying over that list every day. And we also remind you that we're reopening on Sunday, February 14th. Remember that's Transfiguration Sunday and Valentine's Day. So that makes a world of sense. Uh, we glory in that. We're so happy about that. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of you again at 10 a.m. on Sunday, February 14th. We've opened three times. We've closed three times. So we pray that this fourth time uh, will be fruitful, that we don't need to close again, that we can all be together. For those of you that have been together, uh, physically, remember to practice your PPE. Remember masks, remember your hand sanitizer, because friends, <clears throat> this is not over, mm -hmm. and we want to do our part in loving neighbor, and that involves practicing PPE, certainly, not just for us, but for those that are most vulnerable amongst us. Also, we normally do communion on the first Sunday of each month. The next Sunday will be the first Sunday of the month of February. We've decided we're not going to do that. We're going to celebrate communion on Ash Wednesday, as we normally do. So we will forego Holy Communion next Sunday and celebrate communion on Ash Wednesday. We hope to see you all there on Ash Wednesday. Uh, Lori is going to lead us in our scripture at this time. A reading from Mark chapter 1 verses 21 through 28. Jesus drives out an impure spirit. They went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Um, it's interesting to me, particularly in the reading of this passage, that the Vatican, the Vatican today is training priests at the rate of some 300 priests per class, per year, in the theology and the practice of releasing people from demonic oppression. Mm -hmm. The reason for this is mm -hmm. requests worldwide. Mm -hmm are absolutely overwhelming mm. and have been for some time now, perhaps decades. This is something the church got away from 
in its history to a degree, but now has been forced to address. Now, of course, the Vatican trains priests to help cleanse houses, cleanse individuals of demonic oppression after all, all possible psychological tests have been exhausted. I myself would be interested in going through the course. There are priests trained in Cincinnati, in Indiana, in many other places. The demand is that great. Uh, great. I received a call myself within the last two weeks for help in release from those forces. Now let's look at this passage. Friends, I want you to remember that unlike the scribes, unlike the mm -hmm. scribes mentioned in this passage, Jesus teaches with personal authority. Personal authority. His authority is based neither on his credentials, as perhaps mine would be. It's not based on his credentials, nor his ability to cite precedence, but on the spirit that descended on him at his baptism. Jesus is the Son of God, and his authority comes from God alone. Now, in much the same way, look at it this way. Look at it this way, friends. Let's consider an English or a world literature class. And I've been involved with these. Perhaps you have too. That class can spend days. The class can spend weeks. It can spend years discussing an author's intent. Mm. Happens all the time. They can develop theories. They can develop supporting arguments, and that's great. They can debate endlessly, or they can invite the author, mm. the author to come and visit and tell them his or her intent. Mm. Once the author explains the intent, that sells it. Now, nobody can interpret a poem or a writing or a narrative as authoritatively as the one who wrote it. Mm -hmm. Jesus is God's way of sending the author, mm. the author so we can see God clearly. As Jesus will say, he who has seen me mm -hmm. has already seen mm -hmm. the Father. Mm. Now, let's hone in on this passage a bit more closely. Let's take a microscope to this. We read in Mark chapter 1, verse 27. What is this? A new teaching and with authority. Did you catch that, friends? Now, when Jesus comes on the scene, something clearly new happens. Our hope, our longing for change, it takes on a different shape. Hurting people, sinful temptations, human brokenness, and disease are confronted with authority. Authority. The people in this story recognize Jesus' authority in regard to at least two specific things. His teaching and his power over impure spirits. Demons. And there was something about Jesus that made him different. That's clear. From all the other religious teachers of his day, in fact, this is amongst the first things 
mentioned in Mark's gospel about Jesus' public ministry, he writes, it was a ministry of authority. Mm -hmm. There's that word again, mm -hmm. authority. Now we often long to witness the authority of Christ confronting diseases, Christ confronting financial hardships, mm -hmm. Our Lord confronting broken relationships and certainly injustices, injustices of all kinds today. But did you notice we do not pause, we don't pause nearly as often to consider the spiritual dimensions of our suffering. We just do not. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, our struggle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Mm. That's not our main struggle. Rather, we contend with demonic powers that want us to think that our circumstances, our circumstances, not our hearts, are the problem. Now, it's worth noticing that Jesus' teaching, not just his healing, triggered a reaction mm. they triggered a reaction from the crowds mm. almost every time but being amazed mm -hmm. being amazed by itself is not a response to authority jesus teaching demands either submission mm. or rebellion either submission mm. or Rebellion. Mm. It's authoritative. Mm. He calls us to bring our hurts. He calls us to bring our diseases. Our Lord and Savior calls us to bring our very hearts, friends, under his authority. Mm. The question is, simply, how will you respond? Mm. Mm. Let's pray. Jesus, you rule over all things by your word and spirit. Enter our lives with your authority today. As we continue to pray with one heart, as we continue to pray with one voice, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, go in peace now. May God protect you now and always until we meet again. We love you and God bless you.